Hey guys, uh, I think I'm live. Uh, I hope I'm live. Let's. Yep, no, I am live. Hey guys, I hope I'm live. Um, it's been a few. <laughs> it's been a few months since I did a, a Facebook live, so I thought it'd be cool to jump back in and do one. Um, but uh, like anything, if you don't do it for a while, you're sort of fumbling around trying to make sure you got your settings right and all kinds of jazz. So I think we're live um, and we are good to go. What I'd like to do is just make sure I can see here where to uh, share screen. And I think I saw it somewhere, but it uh, seems like it's... Do, do, do. I'll have a little, a little play around with it later. Anyway, we've been talking a lot about sales um, uh, this week and specifically about uh, the need to diversify sales for a, uh, for, for a small tour business that wants to grow, wants to scale fairly quickly. So one of the things that uh, was, was really important to me when I was growing my business. One of the things that I identified really early on uh, when I was growing my business was the need for me to be driving sales through a whole bunch of different channels and having a, I guess, a strategy would be the best way to describe it rather than a reactive approach <clears throat> to actually identify clearly, methodically where uh, my ideal customer or maybe three or four different types of ideal customer were hanging out uh, and pinpointing them, targeting them and building relationships with the, uh, the the right people and organizations through those channels. Okay, so some of the the big mistakes I see two business owners that I speak to making is that, well, obviously they can't grow sales. They're frustrated by their inability to grow their business. And probably three reasons for that that come up most often. The first one being that they've got a really unhealthy reliance on just one or maybe two sales channels. So that generally is direct. You know, a lot of a lot of tour business owners do a lot of direct sales. The other one is going to be OTAs, online travel agents. So more than any other type of conversation I have about sales, I have operators telling me that they do 90% of their sales through OTAs, whether it's Viator or Get Your Guide or Tours by Locals, uh, or they're doing you know a, a massive chunk direct, it could be 90% as well, or a combination of those two. And that, in my experience, leads to what I kind of see as a, a very risky sales strategy or lack of sales strategy. It's very proactive, okay? Um, meaning that they're kind of sitting around waiting for the phone to ring, waiting for the email to ping. Uh, they're investing on you know, SEO or they're relying on the, the engines of the platforms of, of uh, resellers to do their job to, uh, to fill, fill their tours. And I see and I feel that it's a comfortable place for people to be, all right? They don't have to really get themselves out of their comfort zone, put themselves out there uh, to build the right relationships that are gonna help drive sales. And so that, that's the first problem. And the second problem leads from that, which as I say is a situation where you're, you're kind of just you know, waiting for the phone to ring, waiting for the bookings to come through or your email to ping with some good news that someone's booked your trips, okay? Uh, without you actually having to do much to get out of your comfort zone to go out there and, and, and do what it takes to drive sales and build the right relationships. And then the third thing that a lot of operators don't do and aren't doing is that they're not building a, well, a lot of them tell me they've got an email list that is just gathering dust. It's something that might have come through, you know, one of their booking platforms, uh, you know, through Peak or through Fair Harbor. They've got access to this incredible goldmine of data for existing customers. They might also have um, an existing uh, collection of email addresses from historical inquiries or uh, bookings that converted, or they might have digital waivers and they've just been collecting this data over time. And some operators tell me that they've got a list, an email list of people that have either booked or inquired with them that could be 1,000, 2,000, 5,000 uh, strong, and they've literally never emailed them. So they're just sitting on this gold mine and what they're not doing is building uh, an army of raving fans or, or a community um, of people that sort of love them, know them, trust them. So ideally what's going to change that is, uh, and, and, and well, when I say change, I'm talking about change the fact that uh, you may be a, a small two-hour activity or experienced business owner that's struggling to scale your business. Um, to, to do something about that, the things that are going to happen and going to work for you are to A, get yourself or start working towards having this nice even spread 
of sales channels, revenue stream sales channels. Um, let me see if I can share screen here and I'm not gonna fumble <laughs> for too long trying to figure it out. But what I will do is make sure that I'm super prepared for next week. So can't see this, the, can't, can't see what I'm looking for there. Um, 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 no, that's fine. I'll just talk you through it. So me, as by way of example, when I grew my tour business to the point where I was doing about $3 million a year, uh, I had six really strong performing sales channels. Okay, I had um, <clears throat> about 35% of my sales were coming through agents. So DMCs, destination management companies, inbound tour operators, international travel agents, a big chunk of those. And now that's may seem like a heavy, uh, a heavy reliance on that one channel, but that was really broken down into maybe 15 or 20 really good solid relationships or, or agents that were driving consistent bookings, okay? So 35% of 3 million, about 1.4 million, okay? Spread throughout about 20 key clients, all right? A really nice even spread. I then had from memory about 20% was direct, so, you know, 600,000 a year in direct sales. I had corporate, which is about 500,000 to 600,000, about 16 or 17%. Uh, what else did I have? I had uh, a great strategy through hotels and accommodation providers, about uh, 15%, maybe 400,000. And, uh, and then the, the, the remainder was a, a co combination of uh, partnerships and collaborations with other tour activity business owners in my destination doing something different or other businesses and organizations that shared my ideal customer, or my email marketing and list building strategy. I was warming up, creating a community, building an audience, warming them up with great content, turning them into customers. So those things combined allowed me to really quickly scale my business up to multi seven figures um, without, without really stretching at the seams or uh, without hustling or grinding, it was a, it was uh, it, it was a nice even spread of revenue. And one of the core components of that, of course, was my uh, ability to build a community, uh, build relationships with, uh, create um, a strategy where I was I was building my email list and I was emailing and warming them up and creating an army of raving fans that loved me, knew me, and trusted me, which was then quite easy to turn into uh, into customers. So that is. What I would recommend is going to be, well, secret sauce, probably not the word. It's, it's, it seems simple and obvious, but for a business, a tour uh, business owner that's struggling to scale, your number one objective is going to be to get four to six sales channels in place. And the other thing it's going to do is that it's going to rapidly increase the value of your business. Because ultimately what you guys are, are trying to do is to build an asset, all right? a really valuable asset that's worth a lot of money. And that comes through your numbers, yes, through your you know your revenue, through your bottom line profit. But it's also, there's a lot of other things that, 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 that add to value in a business. And a business that is doing $2 million through OTAs or through you know direct bookings, I believe is gonna be less valuable than a business that's doing 2 million bucks spread around uh, the corporate market, agents, OTAs perhaps, direct, partnerships, hotels. So it's going to be resilient. Uh, it's going to mean that if, uh, you know, it's going to remove risk. So, and, and, and anyone who wants to grow value in their business needs to do everything they can to remove any potential risks for someone looking at it. And that's, you know, for anyone, whether you want to run your tour business for the rest of your life or whether you want to sell it in three or five years, it's going to allow you to build a really resilient, scalable, robust, and, and, and valuable business. Okay. So, that's the first thing, four to six sales channels. The next thing is gonna to be to build relationships, okay? So to really focus on getting out of your comfort zone and building the right kind of relationships, okay? And then I guess the third point to that is uh, what, what it's gonna to do to your business to have this network of different types of sales channels um, because they're gonna complement each other. A couple of good examples are gonna be one uh, let's take, for example, you're working with hotels and accommodation providers. You're also working with agents, okay? So uh, you're going to find that to win business through hotels and accommodation providers, the volume of business is going to be smaller, but you're going to get a lot of instant uh, returns for your efforts. There's going to be a lot of quick wins. The gap between uh, never heard of you to first booking is going to be a lot shorter, okay, in my experience. Uh, the second is that 
let's say you compare a channel like agents to the corporate market, they are going to complement each other beautifully in the seasonal nature of, 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 of uh, you know, the potential to, to drive sales. So the corporate market is going to be, you know, there's going to be needs year round through rewards and recognition programs, through company retreats, through company Christmas parties, team building days, end of financial year events. And you're going to find that a lot of corporate needs come out of peak travel season. So therefore, let's say you've got um, you know company Christmas party season in Australia where it's really busy through the first part of December, but then in the second part of December, a lot of international tourists flood into Australia. It's the same in destinations all over the world. It's going to mean you've got this beautiful um, uh, ironing out of the seasonality in your business. Okay. So uh, look, I hope that's helpful for you. And that for me was the recipe that I used to grow my business really, really quickly diversification of sales channels, getting out of your comfort zone, building relationships, and uh, I'm sure you'll be good as gold if you can start to do that. It's also gonna to add to the value of your business. So um, guys, just to recap, a nice short, sharp conversation. Uh, we've talked about sales and specifically the need for any tour business to diversify their sales channels to get sales bookings, inquiries flowing through, let's say four to six, performing sales channels that complement each other well. It's gonna go a long way to you being able to scale your business up quickly. It's also gonna be uh, gonna go a long way to making your business a lot more valuable um, if you have the, the intention of you know transitioning out of it at some point in, in the future. So uh, I'm gonna uh, leave a worksheet. Well, when I say worksheet, I'm like a drag and drop resource, a swipe file of uh, email campaigns that I use with great effect and success in my business to build a community uh, to warm potential leads up, nurture them, turn people that have potentially never heard of you, whether it be agents, whether it be corporate clients, whether it be um, decision makers in clubs or groups or societies or membership organizations, warm them up, uh, turn them into leads, into prospects, and then into, into customers. So I'll leave that, um, that link below for you to download that. And um, yeah, Great spending a few minutes with you and I'm going to aim to do this more regularly, hopefully in this consistent slot on a Thursday morning Australia time. Thanks guys. Hope you enjoyed it.